cancer, he was a Jew assimilated from Hungary. Uh, he lived as a journalist and a writer in Vienna. And he was the one who actually initiated the Zionist movement. Zionist movement, which means to return back to their homeland. He did write many letters at mountains named after Herzl. Okay, now I have to finish with my with my headphones. One second. going to be something very special but this is part of the government and we are going uh, there and I will invite you to get off the bus just a few minutes to uh, to walk to the menorah which is the seven branch candelabrum that I mentioned before our first prime minister and after him, they named this whole area, which is not only the parliament, it is also the Supreme Court of Justice. It is the, all the ministers, ministers of foreign affairs, interior minister, fin, finance minister, 
and the National Bank of Israel. So it's a, it's a big, big, big area, which uh, um, I can see that there is, uh, I can see that it's difficult. No, there are a hawk. I've got to say the sea of this wave. But there are a hawk. You should be this a Okay, I can see that here is no parking. Me a hawk. Okay, and now I can see that here, and normally I wanted to go, uh, I wanted to go up with you here, but there was no parking and I, I don't want you to walk too much. This is what I've been told, that I have to take care of you mm. and give you a leisurely tour, okay? <laughs> so, so, so that's why, otherwise I would not have a problem just stopping and start walking. So we will, we will action are part of the government. The Prime Minister's Office, Finance Ministry, Interior Ministry, that big building coming up on the left side right now, this is the National Bank of Israel. Okay, National Bank of Israel, which is also part uh, of, uh, of the two. And the building next to it, another one on the left side, this is the, uh, the, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So, and on the right side, you can see also a big building with little pyramids on the roof. This is the the architects that have decided to put pyramids. Pyramids as a sign of liberation. The Jewish people have been brought from slavery out of Egypt. So pyramids always symbolize in the Jewish tradition liberation. So the Supreme Court of Justice is that big building here on the right side. Um, which is actually independent, it's part of the government, but it's it's an, it's an autonomy, it's independent. And it's, of course, a very, very important uh, building. Now, uh, uh, if we would have found a parking on the other side, uh, but, uh, without having you to walk too much, we'll, we'll try from this side, okay? So what we are going to do, as soon as the bus has found a place to stop, we and uh, and it uh, uh, makes also the city very beautiful. You know that when you look at sunset over the city, uh, they say. Jerusalem, the golden city, it looks like gold because there is a re reflection of that pinkish color that that stone can you sometimes see. And uh, this is on the right side. This is the Sacher Park. It's a kind of independence park. You can see that there are very modern apartment houses. Also, they are very expensive in in Israel. All the housing are very expensive. Um, and uh, of course, uh, it's like every city, you have more luxurious residential areas and you have uh, more suburbs or uh, working class uh, quarters. It's like everywhere else in the world. But Jerusalem is very green. You know, open uh, streets, parks on the right side, on the left side, wherever you go. Here is one of the residential areas not now in the meantime we have more modern uh, residential area but at the beginning when the no man's land the no man's land this is the no man's land today it's the most beautiful uh, area you have here thank you you have here restaurants very very exclusive restaurants uh, shops, exclusive shops, jewelry, I mean you can, anything you can imagine. And this was 
the no man's land between Jordan and Israel until the Six Day War. And one day they decided that's enough. We are going to make this no man's land into a wonderful, exclusive shopping center. Now, as we turn, and by the way, the wall was barbed wire. This was exactly here where the road is now. Okay, so we are actually passing here what used to be, once upon a time, thanks God it's no longer, uh, the border. The old city wall. You will see the old city wall later on more, more than once. Okay, I will tell you more about it. And we will be driving around the old city. So I will give you a panoramic tour. But the old city that you see today has been rebuilt for the 11th time. Okay? So this is not the original city to, city wall. This city wall is from 1536 exactly. It was built by the Turkish Sultan Sulit special place. I'm not talking about the, all the historical sites. Of course, we have so many historical sites inside the old city. We can spend days uh, there. But now uh, we are on our way. <coughs> so this is perfect because we normally do not spend more than 20 minutes at the shopping stop. So that will be just perfect for our timing. And so we, so that's what we're going to do. And then we have, we go uh, for the shopping tour and then we go for the restaurant and then we go to Gethsemane, Western Wall and whatever we have time, what, I, what else I can show you. I would show you as much as possible if time permits. Okay, this, uh, the, our uh, hotel, our hotel is, we have to get on the bus, drive another, still in the modern part of Jerusalem. Actually, when we speak, when we talk in Jerusalem about the old city, we mean everything that is inside the city walls. That's what we call the old city. Okay. So uh, the modern city of Jerusalem uh, is a very big city <coughs> compared to the, to the size. Also, it's less than one million, but it has the size of Paris. Believe me or not, but you know today, <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know that today, you can everything, you can check everything with Dr. Google, okay? <laughs> Dr. Google tells you everything today. Uh, so, so, actually what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that, that modern Jerusalem, there is nothing really historical. Okay, there are a lot of new buildings uh, growing and growing and growing all the time. But the old city, is what is actually the historical part and some of the places outside <coughs> close to the Mount of Olives. That's, that's where we're going to be. The Garden of Gethsemane is actually part of the Mount of Olives. And the Mount of Olives, that I'm sure it means something to you. Yeah. The Mount of Olives is mentioned so many 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 times in the Bible in the New Testament there are incredible stories uh, again because most of you I uh, okay 
Our hotel was called Olive Tree. You see a lot of squares like here. You see they are just working on it. Uh, where they put in the middle an olive tree, an old olive tree. And we will be in the garden of Gethsemane where you see olive trees that can be up to 1,800 years old, 2,000 years old. Uh, the olive tree is something very special. But the Mount of Olives, and why, does, why is it called Mount of Olives? Because in ancient times, the Mount of Olives was covered with olive trees. Now, in, for the Christians, most of you are, I imagine, so most of you are. Uh, the Mount of Olives has a lot of stories. For, I give you one. Jesus, when he came from his hometown, from Nazareth, from Sea of Galilee to uh, Jerusalem, he always came over the ancient road of Jericho. This was the ancient pilgrim's road. And he entered Jerusalem on the Mount of Olives. And you know the story when he was sitting on a donkey with a palm branch in his hand. This is what, Chris, this is what Christians celebrate today as Palm, palm Sunday. He made his triumphant entrance into Jerusalem. Jesus also sat and wept when he foretold the destruction of Jerusalem. And of course, Jesus ascended to heaven from the Mount of Olives. So the Mount of Olives has a lot of importance for Christians, but not only for Christians. In the Bible, we speak a lot about the Mount of Olives. King David, for instance, he was pursued by his own son, Absalom. <coughs> you know, he was the one with the long hair, the hippie, hippie type. He got caught in, his, in the tree and he was pursuing his own father. And King David came to the Mount of Olives and he was crying over sorrow. And the Mount of Olives has become after the destruction. You know, in Israel, archaeology is like a national sport. <laughs> Everybody likes to dig and to dig and to dig. And it's amazing. We discover all the time. Last week, they discovered in, in the north, in Galilee, they discovered a, a cave with ancient potteries and coins that are dating back to the time of the first temple, which was the different cultures, religions, languages, live very well close one to another. Yeah, we have our we have our crazy types, that's true. We have and they love to do their shopping in the bazaar. They love it. You have to bargain, you know, you can bargaining is part of the of the way of life. If you buy some vegetables or fruits or whatever you like to bargain, okay, put, put the price down, get me a little bit of this, get me a little bit of that. And that goes on and on and on and on. Uh, and you need a lot of patience. People from, people, the Western people from Europe, the United States, they are not used to that. They want to know how much is it, and that's it. <coughs> Tell me how much it is. But here, they love to bargain. What can I do? That's it. So. If we would go into the old city here, you would see a lot of merchants, vegetables, uh, sleeves, clothing, I mean anything you can imagine. And this is one of the crowdiest quarter in Jerusalem. Okay, the, for those who still didn't see, okay, you have to wait a minute, just in another minute, just in another minute you look to the right side 
I'm catching the opening. By the way, by the way, the old city has eight gates. Eight, eight gates. Seven gates are open, and one gate is closed. The gate that is closed has a lot of mysticism. I will tell about a bit more. Now, first of all, let's look at the open gate. Damascus Gate. You can see it. Look down. <coughs> this is one of the main entrances into the old city from the Muslim side. Okay, so you see, and inside, when you go through the Damascus Gate, you go straight into the Muslim quarter. It's very colorful. Uh, smell, good smells, bad smells, you get everything there. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yes, yes, and this is where people go, they're shopping, and they bargain, and they enjoy, and they, that, that's what they love to do. This is their way of life. And when they are finished their shopping, they go back home. <coughs> Okay, traffic jam goes slowly, uh, but this is very normal. We have, by the way, a lot of traffic jams in Israel, uh, unfortunately. There are a little bit higher, sometimes they're a little bit lower, but more or less, I say it's more or less, they are uh, closing the city walls in ancient times. It is true that not all the time the city wall has been built on the same spot. Sometimes there are huge changes, but altogether, uh, more or less, what is today the old city includes the holy Christian signs, the holy Jewish signs, and the holy Muslim signs. So, and that is why uh, it's such an important place. Muslim part, this is the eastern part of Jerusalem, we are in Jerusalem, this is the eastern part, you can see by yourself, all of them, I would say, may, maybe not all, maybe 98%, 98% are Muslim, they live here, they work here, they study here, they go to school here, okay, so, uh, and many of them, they love to, uh, they love to go, uh, there are shops also outside, it's not that only, you see there are a lot of shops here, but a lot of them love to go to the old city through the Damascus Gate, that's the only entrance actually from the eastern side, and where they can, you know, in the old city you can find everything, and they, like, you know, it's a, it's, it's a way of life, uh, the bargaining is part of it, and uh, this is how they spend their days, you know, they can spend hours after arguing and shopping and, and trying to get the prices down, and this is how it goes on. 
Okay. Okay. I think I can see that many of them come from school because of the oh. girls. I can see they are wearing their school yeah. uniforms. I, I bow. You know they have their school uniforms <coughs> and uh, they have to have their head scarves. Well, uh, it, it, it is a problem. It is a problem. Not all girls wear head scarves. But the great majority do. Depends uh, what, what, what kind of family they come from. Um, but you can see in Israel, uh, even in other places, you can see young, young Muslim girls wearing very tight jeans. You know, very tight jeans, but with a headscarf. <laughs> okay, so it's, uh, it's it's a kind of a a mixture of tradition. Yep. Okay, so, and because they are working, uh, 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 they are building and working all the time. It's mm -hmm. endless. Yeah. Endless. Yes. If they finish one crowd, then they start <coughs> another one. And this is what you can see here. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Keep it. Hold it strongly. Okay, another gate coming up here on the right side. A smaller one you can see by itself. It's called Herod, Herod's Gate. It's it has nothing whatsoever to do with Herod. Uh, nothing. I don't even remember uh, how it came to be called Herod's Gate. But some people call it also the sh the sheep gate. This is more this is more common because in ancient times there used to be the sheep market, uh, and in biblical <coughs> times, uh, apparently here people brought their sheep when they wanted to have to offer it on sacrifice. You know, in the ancient times, they used to sacrifice animals, and, uh, and so the sheep was brought by many people if they wanted to sacrifice in the temple. So that's that's very logical that this could have been here because it's very close to the temple area. But officially today, they call it Herod's Gate. Okay, here, you can see that you need a lot of patience here. People stop wherever they want. Exactly. They park wherever they want. Absolutely. You are, it's a nightmare, believe me. Believe me. Okay. See here, even so the... Oh no. The, the, even they are repairing, but the olive tree is in the in the middle of the square. <coughs> he would not... <coughs> sorry, I have a phone call. I must always alter the phone call, sorry. Okay, also Arbeiter Schimi, Bezadimin. 
שהוא לא יודע איפה. אז הוא... אוקיי, אוקיי, ביי ביי, ביי ביי. ואם יש בעיה, אז תתקשר אליי עוד פעם. כי יש לי את הטלפון שלו. ביי ביי. ביי ביי ביי. We're going to see the most important one, Getsemane. Getsemane is at the foot of Mount of Olives. And you may have noticed that there is a church, Russian onion dome. Okay, the golden dome. This is the famous, this is the famous, um, uh, what is it, Mary Magdalene. Cuidado que isto é um passeio. Estás aqui? É, segura-te aqui. Estás a ver? Segura a tua mão, assim. Deixa eu ir para lá. Sim.
not mention that in this area there are many, many other the churches, <coughs> monasteries, Greek Orthodox, Roman Catholic, Armenian, here down there is a very old, it's a very old uh, Greek Orthodox church which is uh, known as the Tomb of Mary. Uh, a very, very beautiful church from the Crusader uh, period. <coughs> and actually, well, I didn't, I did not have time. The day is uh, too short to go into uh, too much history. But you know, uh, the history can be divided into three parts. One is the biblical part, the book of the books, then the 2,000 years of the Jewish exile, and the, the modern state of Israel. All this, of course, takes a lot of time, but the, I, I mentioned already a few biblical names like Abraham, Jacob, King David, King Solomon, um, and King Herod. Okay, now I will stop again. Shampoo, Okay. Uh, the bus driver cannot stop. He has a lot of cars behind him. Uh, therefore, try to take your photographs. Sorry, sorry. Okay, but if we had some on the left side. And look from here, you can see what I told you before. You have the beautiful church, Gethsemane. You have the Russian uh, Orthodox Church, Mary Magdalene. Look down into the valley. Can you see that down in the valley there are some ancient tombs hewn out of the rock down there? The tomb of Absalom, the tomb of the prophet Haggai, Zacharias. Look at this mountain. This is the oldest Jewish cemetery in the world. So you can imagine what's going on here. And the deep valley here on the left side, this is the Kidron Valley that I explained to you before, the last judgment, the resurrection of the dead. So this is where we are going to meet all one day. And as we drive along, as we drive along, you have here on the right side, uh, archaeology excavations. Most of it is from the temple period. Uh, look at the look on the top. The, that grey dome here. This is the El Aqsa Mosque. The El Aqsa Mosque is standing above the foundation. Nothing else but hard and supporting walls. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
alive 